Happy Friday, guys. Walt here with TAV. Today, we are wrapping this one up. This has been a really special project for us. We've been working on this one for quite a while. I know some of you'd seen it on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that, but we had an opportunity to work with multicam patterns. And uh, for those of you in the military and law enforcement, things like that, definitely know what this pattern is, is and, and where it comes from and how functional it really is. Uh, this is something that uh, I, my equipment has been issued in and I've, I've learned to appreciate how, how well this stuff works. So when they called to do a build with us and, uh, and we, had a, a whole, we have a whole marketing plan worked up with them, I was definitely gonna jump in that, on that opportunity. So this has been a huge honor for us uh, to work with these guys and it's been a pleasure. It's, this project has been a lot of fun. So we, uh, we put a lot of attention to detail in all of these builds and I'm, we're gonna do our best to kind of try and show you some of these things that we've, we've done. We do a, a great deal of work on trying to make things very seamless and clean because it helps to find, if there's a failure down the road, we can find it or we can fix something a lot easier. So starting from the front to the back, we're gonna try and cover everything we possibly can and show you where we incorporated a lot of those details. Uh, this is a big one, so we're, we'll try to make it quick, but uh, kind of just starting from the front, working our way back, we'll just go from there and uh, start with the front bumper. This is an aluminum CBI front bumper with the center hoop on it. We make a couple little modifications to these, as, as many of you know, to kind of, uh, that some things that are consistent with what we do on every bumper, like our, like relocating the come up winch remote mount for your, wire, your wired remote, your corded remote goes on here and we extend all the wiring and seal everything back up and hide the control box back behind the grill. So it's a lot easier to get to from here if you needed to, but this is a wireless remote or wireless winch. So you can just keep the fob right in your pocket and just or clip it to your belt loop and operate without even having to touch this. In behind that, Casey Highlights was another partner in this build. So they sent out us uh, the, the lighting that they needed and we incorporated that really nice into the bumper. On in behind here, so going back to the winch, the winch itself is the come up, the new Seal Gen 2 12.5. It's a slimline winch, so it's a little slimmer. It's physically the same size as the 9.5, but it, it fits super clean and super nice in behind there and there's still plenty of room. So it does have the synthetic winch line on here. We've incorporated the Factor 55 Haas Fair Lead and the Ultra Hook from Factor 55, which is an incredibly useful tool. One thing that had to happen in New York was a front license plate. So the best place we could think of putting it was kind of taking a part of one, of one of these mounts that pivots. And if you did need to use this in a recovery scenario, you can just rotate this up and out of the way and still access everything on the winch and, and things like that. And then you know, you're still compliant and kind of just put it right back when you're just in normal daily use. One of the little detail things that we, we kind of spent some time on was mounting this front camera on here that incorporates via a switch on the dash for the factory head unit. And we have a little aluminum piece wedged underneath here to keep everything super tight and clean and it keeps the angle just right to where you could nose right up to another vehicle or a tree or something right up in front of this, the front tube on this, on this bumper. So you can really see everything that's right around here in front of you. Going into the fog lights, this is a pretty cool light from KC. It's an amber light. You wouldn't normally know because it's just a clear lens, but it is an amber as far as replacing the factory fog lights. That incorporated really nice. DB Custom sent this out. This was, um, something that the client wanted. So they sent this out. And then when the vehicle is being wrapped by ImageCraft out of Arizona, who supplies the material for Multicam, was able to m wrap the, this plate in behind here. So it kind of it kind of contrasts really nice with the original Multicam color. And then you, you, right on below that you have, they incorporated the sonar for the factory cruise control, adaptive cruise control, which Believe it or not, if you look at this bumper, that bar is right in front of that sonar, like it's up just a little bit, but it still works. It's kind of like the Tundra we talked about recently, that it'll still work, it kind of just will pop an image or a, a note up on the dash 
that it's dirty, just a cleaner sensor so it'll shut itself off and cruise, cruise control will stop. But you can push and hold your cruise control button and it turns that sonar off so you can still use your cruise control. But for the adaptive thing, it's kind of sporadic. It's off and on every now and then, but it does still work half the time if, if you like that option. Um, going into, let's moving back just a little bit, that uh, on, on the back corner of the bumper, something that you've seen on a lot of our other builds. When we work with McNeil Racing on the fenders, because this truck got a stage two, our, our stage two, we run the McNeil Racing fiberglass fenders and the wheel opening here is a lot larger than factory, obviously, because we need it to be a larger opening and a flare as well. So the truck's wider to fit a larger tire with minimal lift. So by doing that, these bumpers are made to fit a factory fender. So they, they come back pretty far, probably about an inch or two into the fender well about here. So we cut that off and then we re-weld it, box it in and clean it up to match the, the angle of the fender, the, uh, the new fender that's on there. And we also try to incorporate the, the inner fender liners that we make with these. We, we make a nice strong inner fender liner out of ABS and we mold it to the inside of the truck. So all of these are made while the truck is here, we can't, we can't just spit those out and ship them out and send, and send them out to people. We have to make them on the truck while it's here because every single one of these is different enough to where, where you really can't do that. <clears throat> For wheels and tires on this one, Yokohama was a big part of this. And so they sent out the new Geolander MT. It's not really a new, new tire. Uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of new, it's new for us. We've been running Toyos, but uh, on a lot of trucks, but we had the opportunity to work with Yokohama on this one. So, so far I'm really happy with this tire. We've been using it ourselves and it's done good in the snow so far. We've had it in sand. It does exactly how I was expecting it to do in sand. It digs like any other mud terrain tire would, but it's got really good road characteristics, you know, road handling characteristics. This one, I mean, it's, it's quiet for now. It's quiet. It'll be, it'll be, I'll be curious to see how it does you know, with a lot of miles on it, we've got the same tire on our Tundra and it, it's got, uh, it's probably got 7,000 miles on it now and they're doing fine. The, um, the wheel that, that was sent out was uh, the new Method 704. I'm really liking this wheel. It's the Trail Series wheel with the B-Grip technology in it. That really, really works. It works extremely well. Uh, at low, low tire pressures, it basically has a, has a, a set of ridges that run around the inside of the, the bead, both on the outer bead and the inner bead of the wheel. And once that the bead of the tire is set on that, it is really locked down tight. So if you aired this down or you got a flat, it's gonna resist that bead from popping off that much more. Some, some wheels hold better than others, but these, it's hard to seat a bead. Even if you have tire machines or anything else, it's hard to get a bead to seat. So they, they work extremely well going into moving into the engine compartment so we're running an off-grid engineering dual battery system here and it's a, it's staggered so the batteries don't sit side by side the other this the starting battery stays here and its only job is to start the truck we separate those we can separate that with a solenoid and the other the auxiliary batteries on the other side and that's where all of the auxiliary lighting the fridge, anything that isn't, is, is there for anything other than starting the battery goes to that, starting the truck goes to that battery there. Running all the lights, you know, switch, switch panel for the lights is the S-Pod Bantam. This is a pretty cool unit. We run these in pretty much every build. One, it's one version of the, of the S-Pod, but this is the Bantam. So you can daisy chain several of these together with one touch screen inside the cab. So you can go, I believe, up to four different different panels and with one switch panel in there with four different boards and you can run a lot of a lot of auxiliary components that way we kind of put together our own fuse block right here labeling what is you know fridge or arb compressor or under hood lights whatever it may be is easy to get to here we have a little bracket that we make we make a lot of our own little brackets and this one is really nicely you know, you know, out of the way, you don't have to worry about it. It's super easy to get to, easy to see, and easy to service. Try to keep all of the loom consistent, run, you know, as clean as we can possibly make it, but serviceable as well. KC sent out another set of lights that I've, I've really been liking. So this is the underhood kit. We've got them mounted 
in a port in, in part of the molding in the in the uh, the hood here, and it casts a really nice light as you can see. And we have the switch mounted right under the hood, so you can see how effective that light, the throw of light is there. And you just shut it off and close the hood and carry on. On this truck, we got a we got a front locker, an ARV air locker. and just the, the factory rear electric locker. And we can run that off of that Bantam as well that's inside there. We'll show you that here in just a second. Kind of moving back a little bit. You can see, obviously, we're running the Casey Highlights light bar up here. And this is a bracket that they sent out with the, with the light bar. But we did a couple things to incorporate it uh, a certain way. So it's mounted into the underside of the Front Runner Outfitters Slimline 2 roof rack, extremely solid and close. We trimmed and fit and everything fits real nice and tight. And our loom can run down the A-pillar on both sides and it's tucked away really nice. So nothing snags it or grabs it, doesn't rattle or shake around. The center of the light bar is supported to the roof rack as well to keep any kind of vibration down while you're moving down a, a nasty dirt road or something at speed, it, it keeps the light bar from wanting to bounce or vibrate. And we took the bracket that they supply with that, took half of it, and then we made our own bracket to, to tie into that and makes it really rigid and it's still adjustable. We are running the, some more KC highlights on the side for working light, left, left and right, right here. These are maneuverable. You can, you can tweak them, twist them, you know, point them where you want them and it's really good use of, of light off the sides of the truck, kind of alley light. It's good for camp, looking for a camp spot, something like that. With the rack itself, it's the front runner slimline two roof rack for the Tacoma roof. And what's a little bit different about this one is we just moved it forward one slat, so one foot for the AT habitat to fit. So you can kind of see we still use that, that rear foot for the mounting point for this rear light but we can move it forward one slat, giving us a little bit of real estate for the light to close up that gap there, the light bar, and then we can, the front of the AT Habitat is probably two, two inches away from it, so you'll never hit the rack with the camper. And it's, it's really nicely fitted in there. It's almost like it was made, made to work that way. This is a Pelican 1720 rifle case. Similar to what we've got on our Tacoma. We've been running that for many years now, and it fits perfectly in, in this, this rack down inside the lip of this rack. So we have it bolted through from the inside of the case, and it's a good place for recovery gear, camp chairs, things like that. If you wanted to keep rifles in there, I guess you could. It's not gonna hurt anything, but we just use it for, for recovery gear personally. But kind of moving to the other side, it's, uh, the rack is also, uh, you know, a good spot for a set of max tracks on the roof. I like to carry four, um, just one for each tire, you know, stack them in the back, level the camper if you need to. But I found two of the uh, stratchets from Front Runner work extremely well. They're very quick if you want to just take the, the tracks off the roof. But if the tracks are full of mud or snow or something like that, you can still just throw them on the roof. And, and run the stratchet over it and it's gonna hold it tight and secure and it's not gonna vibrate around. And then you can clean them out later when you get to where you're going. If you need to lock them down, just run a cable through them through the roof and you're fine. It's just a little easier to use than the, than the pins because if, if they're not laying perfectly flat with the pins, that can, it can be hard to, hard to line up. Moving back a little further here, that wraps it up for the roof rack. We address the lights and things like that. This is also, the low profile rack. So this foot rail here is a newer version. So if you look, this gap here is lower to the roof. So there's not room to put like a slide in table, the, the front runner table underneath, but it gets your roof rack much lower. And that's how we're able to fit it underneath the camper so well. It's just a low profile. You can get both, but it's just a lower profile roof rail or foot rail. The camper itself on the bed of this truck is the AT Overland Habitat, it's the long bed trucks, so is a six foot bed. And some of the options that it, it has, it came raw finish because it was going to be wrapped 
ImageCraft in Arizona supplied the wrap for supplies that for Multicam, and they sent their team out and came out and wrapped this thing in a couple days. It was pretty cool watching those guys work. So, and they matched the pattern. If you look at what the pattern looks like here, they matched the pattern from this down to the rest of the truck and moving forward. So you can see where they matched the pattern of the camouflage from the front of the camper into the cab and, and on the fenders and everything else. So there was a, there was a, a, a way they did this that wasn't just throwing this together. It was pretty, pretty cool to see how they did that. The, one of the options here on the camper itself is the hatch. The side hatches gives you access, lockable access from the outside. And that's a very nice thing to have, especially with a six foot, six foot bed. You don't have to access every, you don't have to access it from the back. You can just get, get in from either side. This is the McNeil racing bedside to match the front. So we're about three inch flare on this. I believe this is three or four inch flare. We line X these, or we bring this over to line X in Albuquerque and we have them line X the top and line X the fender flare that's molded into this so it looks like a separate piece but it's all molded into the into this in one piece and this looks more factory we did the inner fender liners on the back of this as well it's really easy to clean out too if you pressure wash up in there you can really clean it out moving around to the back of the truck we're running a cbi rear bumper dual swing out with a couple options here as well this is a small tank on here, makes, it, makes the tank look really small, but there's real estate here on both sides of this that there's gonna be a bike rack that will go into this, this two inch receiver here. So you can swing your bikes out of the way, but this gives you real estate on either side of this tank for whatever you want. You know, if you wanna mount something, there's holes here. It's, it's real easy to get to. And then one of the other options, as you've noticed, there's no tire on this, on this swing out. There's still a 35 inch full size spare tire on this truck and it's not under the bed. But what we're doing here, we're just using this for camping area. So you've got your drop down camp table here. We kind of take it upon ourselves to wrap the cables, the silver cables in black loom and heat shrink the ends of it. So it kind of ties into the rest of the truck, keeps everything a little bit more subdued. I know there's shiny stuff on here, but that's just one little detail that we like to do. On the other side, we have a Rotopax mount for a water can and a fuel can. This truck does have the Long Range America 33 gallon fuel tank in it. It's a replacement tank. So he doesn't need a ton of extra fuel. This is just a, a little emergency type thing, maybe to help somebody else out if you need it. But it's, it's there if you need it. In going into the back here, KC highlights sent us a couple more lights here, kind of like the underhood kits, the same light. So we incorporated one right here for when the camper's open, this hatch stays about like this. So that gives you really good working light over your tailgate. So this truck's got the, the mountain hatch on here, which is a very nice surface to work off of. Instead of the ridges that come in your tailgate, this surface is, is amazing. So this, this is a separate switch that we put in right here. So you can turn that off or on it as needed. We incorporated some more lights on the, on the inside. It's the same light. So you can kind of see out here, it brightens up the whole inside of the bed of the truck. So if it's dark out, or you just need to be able to look in here and see something, you can see the Pro Eagle race jack is mounted in its cradle forward in the bed. It's a really solid mount. The spare tire is mounted with a Wilco tire mount that's in the track and the forward in the bed so that's a 35 inch spare full size spare easy to get to easy to roll out of there and in the six foot bed truck it's really nice to have because it's effectively a five foot bed with all of that stuff up there and it really doesn't ever get in the way we carry a 37 inch spare in our bed and it's it's great the um goose gear items that are in this really clean up the back of a truck and it's all fully functional stuff there's nothing in here that that doesn't serve a purpose. So Goose Gear makes their plate, their, this, this piece here is called a plate that goes all the way forward and it makes a smooth floor all the way forward, but it also gives you the ability to mount their, 
their fridge slide or their cabinet, their camp kitchen, any of the modules that they have, they have some specifically set up, the floor plan set up specifically for the AT uh, habitat and summits. And as you can see, I mean, there's plenty of room to move in and out of here. You can store gear on the floor, anything you want. And this stays put, everything has its home. This is one of the new Dometic CFX3 uh, fridges. This is the 45. 45 CFX3 45 liter. The goose gear slide that comes with this, we took the base of it and flipped it over because the bottom of this fridge is tapered and now it sits flat, completely flat. And the front runner strap, uh, fridge tie down straps really clean it up nice. And you can see how close the tolerances are to the, under, to the bottom side of the cabinet and it doesn't touch. It comes all the way open and you can access your fridge, completely access your fridge, and nothing touches. Everything is wired, all the wiring and everything's run hidden inside the truck. So it can't really, it can't be seen, but it can be accessed. If you needed to pull the fridge out for some reason, you could, you could take it out fairly easily and then disconnect your plug and, and it's good to go. Goose Gear makes this plate to also fit around the Total Chaos bed stiffeners that we put in these trucks. So as you can see, the fiberglass bedside has to be shaped and is mounted into the factory sheet metal that is on the factory bed, but then the Total Chaos bed stiffeners help hold all of that together. We've got hatches on both sides. So you can reach right in this, this side as well. If you have gear on this side, you can just put, put gear in and out over here as well. Reach in and out. The other side has the ARB dual air compressor in it, which is something you want to be able to get to fairly quickly. Or if you can, you know, you don't want to have to be moving stuff around very much. We mounted it to the back side of the goose gear cabinet. So it's a solid mount. The air compressor is Mounted. This is a universal mounting bracket that comes with the air compressor. So your air compressor is getting good clean air from inside this environment here because obviously you don't want a bunch of dust and stuff where you're going to be sleeping. So it's drawing in clean air from here. Your, your air truck is right here. Your air hose and everything is mounted right to it. So it's just Velcro strips kind of holding it in place. And it can be turned on and off from here. So one of the options that we always recommend getting if you're going to get an AT habitat or, or summit or, or anything from AT is get the electrical because they will, they will set these two, these two panels up. There's one on each side and they'll run wiring into here. So this, this is a switch that they put in. So you've got a small amber working light here, you know, interior light, one on either side, but that, it, there's there's pre-drilled drilled holes and things like that in here. They send it with a 12 volt plug here and a dual USB here. And it tells you your voltage here as well for your auxiliary battery. Those come from AT and we put, we can use that to put these type of lights in. So that's for your interior lights. This is for the one that's on the hatch and you've got your interior light here. And you can also put switches on this side if you need to. If you have a working light out here, it gives us the freedom to kind of put auxiliary lighting and working light wherever you want it. And it's one of the really nice little features that comes from them. And we can, we can build off of that. For the front suspension on this truck, we're running the Total Chaos Long Travel plus 2.5 Long Travel. So that's two and a half inches wider per side. That is what we consider our stage two. And the stage two consists of basically the long travel king, coil over, upper and lower control arm from Total Chaos, Total Chaos spindle gusset, cam tab gussets. We're running RC, RCV axle shafts up front, CVs. That's part of our, it's basically a stage two plus that's included in our stage three. It's an option for the stage two. This one here, uh, when he went ahead and opted for the stronger axle shaft up front, this stage two usually comes with a gear ratio because we're running about a 35 inch tire because of its width. It's very proportionate on a 35. We can run them on a 33 with no, with no fenders or fiberglass or anything. 
but it with a 35 it's very very proportionate especially for a long wheelbase like the long bed tacoma the gearing in this one this one's a 488 with a front locker it's got the arb in the front factory e-locker in the rear and we're running the rci aluminum skid plates and sliders in the rear suspension we're running a custom Alcan leaf spring pack, which is what we put in every one of our builds, the stage one, two, and three, all get a custom leaf spring pack because the suspension is the last thing we consider when we're talking about a build, especially uh, of this size, because we need the truck to do a certain job. So once everything is on the truck and we know how the truck's gonna be driven, then we look at how to carry all of that, all of the weight and that's where the spring rates come in, the valving and the shocks come in, and which suspension stage is gonna work best for that client. In this case, it's a stage two plus, which is kind of beefing up some of the other components like the front axle shafts and, and gears and things like that, and the long range fuel tank. Long range fuel tank is also standard on a stage three. This one here with the stage two plus has not only the long range fuel tank, we're running the archive garage, shackle and shackle hanger and there's a there's a, a bar that goes from side to side that ties in those shackle hangers and it really really makes the back of the truck that much more firm to where the the shackle hangers don't want to twist the frame if you're in our, under a heavy articulation so it when you're carrying a load in the bed of the truck it it really stiffens up the back end of the truck and makes it feel real solid in a good way you know that you're not gonna be twisting parts of your frame off. We're also running the Archive Garage shock tower kit for this. So it's a 12 inch travel custom King rear shock. And we're running the, uh, the valve adjusters on both the front and rear of these shocks. And these, these things droop out really nice and far. We've got them limited with a limiting strap that keeps the shackle from pointing too far forward and it, it collects very nicely up under there. And the spring, the spring rate carries the load because we've considered that after knowing what's gonna be on the truck, the springs were built for the load that's gonna be on the truck. So we don't have to worry about it not being oversprung or undersprung and sagging and not working right. And that's why these, these things come together so nice and clean and, and function so well, because I think we do, do the suspension stuff backwards compared to what a lot of other shops will, the, I think, a lot of the better shops out there will consider the suspension in the order that they do because they know it's it's designed to carry a load and perform and talk to the ground a certain way. So that stuff gets put together once they know how much how much the truck's going to weigh. Same thing with the valving inside the shock. That's got to those those all work together. So for the interior, we try to keep it again very clean and simple and functional. So starting with the electronics, this is the S-Pod that I mentioned earlier in the engine compartment. This is part of the, this is the touchscreen for the Bantam. So in this, we can select however many panel or boards we have. If we have say three boards under the hood, we can run all of those off of, off of this and have eight switches per board. So this one, we're just running one. So we have all of our switches. We have our, our light bar, our overhead light bar right here, and you can name them whatever you want. So, you know, ARB compressor is your bottom left that turns your front compressor on or your compressor on for your front locker. There's your front locker, driver's side roof rack for the left and then driver's side roof rack for the right. And you kind of know right where it's at. We run our loom and kind of hide it away in the A-pillar and then into its destination in the S-pod. And you can just shut it off and make it a black screen. And then to wake it up, you just touch it and it comes on. It's a pretty nice, pretty nice setup. That, that way it's not distracting. If you're not using it, you're not using a switch panel all the time. It's just a black screen. On down here, kind of where there's this little pocket that we normally see in the Tacomas, we've got, we've got the dual battery setup where we can turn, turn it on all the time, switch it to auto, which it will shut the solenoid off by itself, or we can turn it off, disconnect the battery altogether. There's a lot going on with these trucks and they can be pretty expensive when, when they're built out. So to protect that, we're running a Revelco. This Revelco makes it so you cannot take this truck. You have to take the truck up off, you have to pick the truck up off the ground to take it. It cannot be started, but there's still power. You can see there's power. This interrupts the signal. 
to anything that would cause this truck truck to run. And it's just keyed and you just put it in and it's, it's ready to rock and roll. Up here for electronics, he wanted to keep it simple, just a phone mount basically. So we're running the Expedition Essentials track on top of the, this trim piece here. So he's got a small ram mount on either side and you know two cell phones and that's basically it. The camera I mentioned before on the front bumper, you can select that with this one switch right here. It looks very factory, so if you want your front camera, you just push up and it pops up on the screen. If you want your rear camera, just push down and it also pops up on your screen, your factory head unit. And that's, that's all the electronics or any kind of modifications we've made to the, to the interior. Uh, we, normally when we, when we do that, we try to keep it as user-friendly as possible. We don't have, want to have a whole lot of stuff in, in impeding your vision out of the windshield for one but we don't want to have to add, we want to add as little as possible to the inside of the truck, keeping it as clean as possible. All right, so we've got the multicam truck all loaded up, ready to go home. It's heading back to New York today and just kind of want to thank everybody for checking this one out. It's been a, like I said, it's a, it's been a real special project for us and hopefully you were able to get something out of this as far as uh, answers to all your questions and kind of get another vantage point of checking this thing out in action and seeing it seeing it being used a little bit here kind of tuning it as we go we will be uh kind of putting this in out a little more often you know you'll see some more photos of it we'll be doing some marketing projects with this truck here in the future so just keep uh keep an eye out for on youtube at uh, tactical application vehicles on youtube and if you want to see more of that like and subscribe to that channel and uh, you'll be able to see updates and things of uh, this truck and more projects to come and we're also going to be uh, putting more of this on instagram at tav llc so be sure to check us out head over to the website as well tavllc.com and between all of those you should be able to get uh, get what you need answered if you got any questions uh, we appreciate it and hope everybody stays safe